Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today I'm going to show you how to use the USB flashback method on the MSI B450 Gaming Plus. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the BIOS flashback button on your MSI Max enabled motherboard. Now, this particular version is for the B450 Gaming Plus Max, but the similar situation occurs with most of the Max boards, the ones that have the BIOS button on the back. So, what are you going to need for this? So, the first thing you need, obviously, is the motherboard itself. You don't really need any other equipment other than a power supply to power the motherboard up and a USB stick. You will also need a computer or laptop or some kind of internet device which you can actually get online and download the BIOS to your flash drive. So with that said, let's get on with it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is to head over to the MSI website and get the appropriate BIOS for your motherboard. Now, like I said, this one is for the B450 Gaming Plus Max, as you can see there, and I'm on the support page. Obviously, depending on which motherboard you've got, download the appropriate driver. Now, in the BIOS section, we're going to go for the very first one at the top here. So this is the latest version, dated 7.11.2019, and it's a 14 meg size. So you will need a USB drive of at least that capacity, if not larger. I'm going to be using a ScanDisk Ultra USB 3.0 32 gig drive, but pretty much you can use most flash drives. If you do find any problems, then you may need to find a flash drive which is actually compatible with your BIOS. But with that said, let's put the USB stick into the computer and we'll make a start. So the first thing to do is to format the drive. Make sure the drive is formatted. So we'll go into the format section and format it to the full capacity and choose FAT32. This is very important. The allocation size you can set to default, but other than that, pretty much everything is the same and provide a quick format. So we're gonna go ahead and do that to make sure the drive is properly formatted. And you'll get a warning to say that anything on the disk will be erased. So obviously make sure there's nothing on there you need before you do this and click OK. And that was it. That was pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. So we've gone ahead and done that. So now we want, what we need to do is to download the BIOS. So we're going to go ahead and click on the download section here and choose a location to download it to. So I'm going to download it primarily to the desktop. So hit save and that should take a few seconds. So what we're going to do is now we'll minimize this window, go to the desktop, and we can see our bars. And you see there's a couple of ones I've downloaded already, but the process is going to be the same. So what you want to do is to right-click on the folder, choose Extract All, and you might as well extract it to the same location, and this gives us our folder. Now, it's very important in this particular section that you have the uh, file name extensions enabled. So go into the folder, and then what you need to do is to rename the BIOS file, which is this one, and rename it to msi.rom and delete anything else. This has to be in uppercase, so msi.rom in uppercase. Press enter and it will say if you want to change it, it will become unstable, etc. You should want to change it, so we'll go ahead and click yes. So that's our ROM file ready. This file here is just a text file, so we can ignore that. So what we want to do now is to right click on this one and choose send to and send it to our formatted drive. So we're going to send it to the G drive, which is our new volume, which is our USB stick. And if we click on there, we can see that it is installed. So now we've got our USB stick ready, we can go over to the computer, get things ready and start the flashing process. So now we've got our USB stick with our msi.rom file on there, all ready to go. Make sure that's the only file on there. You don't want to add anything which could potentially screw up the process. So the USB drive is going to be put into the motherboard. Now on this particular motherboard, on the back plate, we've got the BIOS flashback button, which is in the top corner here. Now the USB port to use is this one just here, which is normally the one which is closest to that actual port. But do check with your owner's manual to see which of the USB ports is the one specified for the USB flashback. So now we're going to get the motherboard ready, apply some power to it, and then we can start the process. Okay, so we've got our motherboard connected up. Now, all we need for this is our power supply, the 24-pin ATX connector, and either the 4- or 8-pin supplementary power for the CPU. You don't need any RAM, you don't need any CPU. Ideally, it's best if you can actually have all the components off of the board. I have heard rumors or comments that people can do this with a fully assembled system, 
but MSI recommends to do it this way, so this is the way I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, good practice here is to make sure that the CMOS is completely in its reset state, or the BIOS is in its re uh, default state. You can do that by either shorting out the pin on the motherboard, or alternately, you can just remove the BIOS battery and leave it disconnected for a few seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip that out now. So remove the battery and keep it out of the board for a couple of seconds, maybe 30 seconds or so. Then you can put the BIOS battery back in and we're getting pretty much ready to go. So now we've got the motherboard connected up, we've got all our power, we've got no extra peripherals attached at all, and we've also reset our CMOS. So we're in really good shape. Now the next thing to do is to install the drive actually into the board. So again, we're gonna be using this slot at the bottom, which is next to the BIOS flashback button, and just make sure it's firmly inserted and it's not gonna wiggle or come loose because that's the last thing you want to happen. So now we can apply power to the board. This is probably the thing to do at the very end when you're ready to go, just in case you accidentally short anything out. So I'm gonna plug in the power connector to our power supply so the board is ready to be put live. So making sure the power supply is actually switched on and live, all we need to do now is to press the BIOS flashback button. And when you press it, you'll see there's an LED on the motherboard which will light up and start flashing. So I'm gonna press and hold it until it starts flashing. Sometimes there's a little bit of a delay before it does it. You will notice that the power supply fan will spin up and as if it's ready, and you should hopefully see that the USB stick, if it's actually got it, if it's got a LED in there to show that it's actually doing something, it will start flashing as well as the BIOS flashback LED. And the BIOS flashback LED also has some kind of error correction in it as well. So if there is a problem with what you're trying to do, maybe your drive isn't formatted properly or the BIOS file is in the wrong format, you will get a kind of error code readout. So if your BIOS light flashes maybe two times or twice and then stops, and does nothing, then you've probably done something wrong or it may be your USB stick isn't compatible with this particular procedure. So as you can see from ours, the light is flashing away quite happily there. So all we need to do now is to go off, have a quick cup of tea and wait till it stops flashing. Okay, so that's the process finished. Now at the end of the process, normally this takes about three to four minutes, maybe slightly longer, maybe slightly less. It is around about three to four minutes. You'll find that the system will restart itself. Now there's not a lot, you can tell that it has actually done that. Although on this particular board, the Gaming Plus logo turns off, turns back on again and also the fan actually shut down and then restarted again as you would find when you normally restart a system. Also, the LED light has uh, turned itself off on the BIOS flashback section and on the motherboard itself, the MSI debug LEDs are now stuck in the CPU position, which is making sense because we don't physically have a CPU installed. So at this point now, all we need to do is to literally just power off the uh, power wait for that to shut down, then we can remove our USB stick and then go ahead and disconnect the rest of the cables and our motherboard is pretty much ready to go. Now at this point, depending on what processor you've got, uh, you may want to do a bench test, install your processor, install your RAM, connect up your graphics card if you've got one and just make sure that it all boots up properly as it should do. Generally, this works nine times out of 10. You may have problems with things like corrupted drivers, you may have problems with uh, possibly a corrupted BIOS, worst case scenario, something could go wrong with that, so you may need to actually redo the BIOS flashback again. If for some reason it doesn't boot up the first time after you've done this, you can actually go through the process again, uh, ideally download the file again, put it onto your memory stick again, again, make sure that it's formatted FAT32 and all that kind of stuff, and just make sure you've got a compatible device if you're experiencing any problems. So there you go, there is how to use the USB BIOS flashback on the MSI B450 Gaming Plus Max. If you've got any comments or questions, please feel free to stick them in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.